Hello everyone, my name is Luis Hernandez and thank you for joining me for part 2 of Building Castles in the Sky. Today I will be discussing NAT gateways and private subnets. A reminder, this is a hands-on tutorial so we will be jumping onto the AWS console shortly. Before we do, however, I'd like to level set where we're going to begin today's lesson and where we should arrive at the end of today's lesson. So this is what we have already built. We have a virtual private cloud, which is already in the AWS uh, cloud environment. Within that VPC, we have two subnets. One of them is a private subnet, and that private subnet contains a mock database server behind a security group. The other subnet is a public subnet. It also contains a mock server, this time a web server, also behind a security group. You'll notice that there is actually a route that leads from the internet gateway over to the public subnet and this is what allows the web server to be able to access the internet so traffic to and from the internet is being allowed from that uh, internet gateway to our public subnet the same is not the case for the private subnet you'll notice there is no route for the private subnet so right now there is no way for the internet uh, to reach the database server and there is also no way for the database server to reach the internet. What we want to do is we want to allow the database server that lives in the private subnet, we want to allow that server to securely access the internet. Uh, we want to maintain that in our private subnet and we don't want to advertise that IP address publicly. So what we're going to do is the following. We're going to create a NAT gateway. NAT stands for Network Address Translation. Now, there's also something called a NAT instance and those have been around longer, but they are older uh, to be very black and white they're older and they require maintenance you have to basically fire up an ec2 instance that is a NAT gate uh, a NAT instance and you have to patch it up and you have to maintain it etc etc you also have to put it behind a security group with a NAT gateway aws takes care of a lot of that for you so you don't really have to work as much on a NAT gateway uh, as you do on a NAT instance. So since NAT gateways are the way of the future, we're just going to go ahead and use that uh, for this tutorial. So we're going to we're going to create a NAT gateway. We'll then go ahead and log on to our database server via the web server uh, that is in our public subnet. We're going to use that web server as a bastion host or jump box, and we'll know that we have successfully completed our tutorial today once we're able to successfully run a yum update on the database server because that will indicate that such server the database server is now able to access the internet okay and once we have completed we should end up with something that looks a little more like this and you'll notice the addition of the NAT gateway here as well as a route that are, allows communication from the database server to the NAT gateway. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to the console. Here we are at the AWS console. And so the first thing that we need to do is go to VPC. Uh, we will see that we already have our VPC and all of the other things created that we talked about. Uh, but actually, let's go over to EC2 and take a look at our instances that are um, running. Okay, so we have our web server here and our database server, and I'm going to go ahead and connect to my web server via SSH. Okay, and I am using PuTTY for this, so the way to do that is EC2-user at the IP address I want to connect to. I'm going to be using port 22 because that's what I've opened up on my security group. I am using SSH and I do have a private key that I want to use for this connection. Okay, there it is. Open, excellent. Let's go back to the session, take a one quick last look, make, sh make sure everything looks good and now everything looks good. Okay. 
open that up and there we have it all right so the first thing i'm going to do is elevate my privileges and now i am the root user okay so now what i want to do from here is i want to jump from this server to this other one <clears throat> to my database server. Now, as we mentioned earlier, my database server is inside my private subnet. So what I need to do is essentially I need to bring in my private key in here. Let's see here. There is nothing in my directory that's, and I am in the home directory of the EC2 user. So what I'm going to do is I already have my private key out here. I'm going to put it into my clipboard. And I'm going to quickly VI a file. Okay, now here, we're just basically going to paste in our key. Write that, make sure it's there, and there it is. Now we have to change the permissions on that file. Uh, so we're going to do that by using the chmod command. And the permissions we're going to allow are 0600 on this file. Okay, let's verify that worked. Excellent. So now we should be able to simply ssh ec2-user at my private IP address, which is 10.0.3.2.0.3. Let's go back here. Oops. And we want to use our private key. That is I, private key. Excellent. And now I have logged into the database server that is sitting in my private subnet now if I try to do something like I don't want to be young and stuff this is going to go to every mirror um, there is no access to the internet um, let's see what I can do to prove that well going to run a yum update um, it is going to fail it is not going to succeed and the reason for that is because it does not have internet access so as you can see here oh hold on I forgot to elevate my privileges okay now I'm the root user so I'm going to attempt to run a yum update and what will happen is it's not going to work and the reason it is not going to work it is obvious because this is on the private subnet which means that it doesn't have access to the internet there's no way that it can uh, go ahead and it, it, I went ahead and canceled it cannot reach the internet at this time so that's why it's not performing the yum update so let's go ahead and fix that. Let's add an internet gateway here. We'll go to our VPC. And here I want to go to NAT gateways. Now I have some that I've deleted from earlier. I'm going to create a new NAT gateway and this is really straightforward. It basically asks you for a subnet and an elastic IP. That's pretty much it. You don't even have to give it a name. So here, obviously, I have all the subnets that I have available to me from my default VPC here, as well as from my demo VPC. One thing to keep in mind is that when you're going to do a NAT gateway or a NAT instance either, or you always want to put it into the public subnet. Okay, it, It's going to have access to the internet and then... What we want to do is we want to present the private subnet, the uh, rather the server in the private subnet with a route to access the uh, 
uh, the NAT gateway. So let's select our public subnet here. And the next thing it wants is an elastic IP. I don't have one, so I'm just going to click this button so that it creates one and automatically assigns it. And you can see that that was successful. Now I can go ahead and say create my NAT gateway. Great. So the message that you get uh, it tells you that you have uh, succeeded in the creation of your NAT gateway, but you must go to your route tables and edit them in order to include a route with a target of you know your new NAT gateway in order for things to work and conveniently there's a button right here that we're going to uh, make use of click on here and it will take you directly to your route tables now we know the public route is all set that one already has a public route to the internet gateway so we're going to leave that one alone the one we're we're uh, interested in is the other one that's the one that is private and so here you see it's got black hole because I deleted a, NAT, a previous NAT gateway that was there. So let's go ahead and fix that. Obviously, it doesn't like that. So let's remove this. And what we want to do is we want to add a route for all traffic. And once we click on here, you'll notice that I now have either my internet gateway or my NAT gateway. So obviously here I'm going to select my NAT gateway. I'm going to click save. And that's really, folks, all it takes for you to create a route that goes from your private subnet to your NAT gateway. So if that all works, then I should be able to come here and I am still logged into my uh, my database server here inside of my public subnet now if if that worked I should be able to now do a yum update and it should be able to connect to the internet and if that doesn't work because I may have already done so okay earlier no project no problem what I'll do instead here is I'll install MySQL. And there you have it. Uh, no problem. I was able to get that out of the internet and install it. No problem. Uh, so as you can see, we are able to connect to the internet from our database server thanks to our NAT gateway and really the NAT gateway is the better option if you have to choose between a NAT instance and a NAT gateway because again as I mentioned earlier the NAT gateway is a lot less uh, requires a lot less maintenance on our part AWS takes care of everything for you you don't even have to put the NAT gateway behind a security group again Amazon takes care of all that for you so thank you very much uh, this brings this tutorial to an end if you have any questions if you think i missed anything if you think i could have done this differently or anything else at all please feel free to leave in the comments below i will be checking on those and i will be answering any questions as they arrive thanks again and i'll see you next time